and the first dimension he checks is wrong. He throws the report at me with just one dimension on it and says, well, that part's bad. Consistently are out one-tenth. They can be consistently intolerant. Yeah. yeah. Look, your parts are our parts. They're, they're our parts, right? And yeah. I, I think that perspective goes a long way. What's okay. up, Travis? What's up, Titan? Oh, man. Mm. There, Trav there. is in the house. You know what I, know what I love is that we've built this incredible team, and then I can sit here... Right here in this beautiful building, as yep. you were just explaining, we, we were just talking. looking at the golf course right there, and and there's like a quality show going on in Illinois, like way over there. Yeah, and Titans of CNC is in attendance doing a there. keynote. Yes, but it's not me, right? It's Travis because you have a great laying team. it down. You have you a great I mean? team. I love that. I used yeah. to dream about this stuff like <laughs> such a long time ago, and. I came in on Monday, so we're going to Vegas, you know, and then I came in on Monday and uh, Barry's over here with Ben and and it's like, what's up? How long did you guys work? Oh, the entire weekend, (laughs) you know, getting the gas monkey grill set up. Dude, that grill turned out ridiculous. It was beautiful. So nice. Absolutely beautiful. So nice. But it's like, I don't even have to say anything, man. And they they just take care of business because each, each guy here is just all-stars man just monsters in the trade and stuff and so then of course i had to be like all right barry you deserve it oh <laughs> man gonna take you to vegas we're gonna, we're gonna, let's, go, let's, go, yeah. let's go get some uh tickets and go to the sema show so you can see that truck unveiled with your beautiful oh, grill yes. that's in spec you know what i mean and oh it's so good it's you, know, so you know good. it was good because it even shut jesse up Right, Ooh. there was he no, had no comebacks. Yeah, no Barry signature chatter <laughs> pattern. <nothing. laughs> well, I I feel pretty good about it myself because I'm always lifting you up, man. Because what that's what I do. I take a step back, <laughs> lift up my guys, and uh, I'm always like Barry's so great. He's so great. As you break end mills, I'm like you're so great. You're so great. You know what I mean? And but after a while, you start thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like oh. he's breaking more tools than anybody else in the shop. You know so. All of a sudden, he comes out with this grill and these finishes, and it's on a three axis, and mm-hmm. it is stunning. Some like, of the blends, stunning. So I was, I was like, okay. All joking aside, dude, you're a monster. <laughs> and you just sent you're a what? Monster. You just sent the link, right? They're d- doing a full live unveil tomorrow. They did the uh, unveil today. Oh, it was today. Yep. Oh my god, it and, was. And I caught a piece. Did you watch it live? Yeah. Or, yeah, 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 we yeah. watched it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And we're here in Texas right now doing a podcast, and then tomorrow we will be on the floor of SEMA like yep. that. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, man. Boom the super, super good. Super but good. what was crazy about that grill, too, if you think about this, one of one. You had no more material, no, no backup material. Yeah. You had the front grill 3D printed to make sure it fit right, but you had to absolutely make sure that thing was not going to have any issues yep and six days to do it hello yeah so. your, your time frame was basically <laughs> was, you you had enough time struggle. to make one grill <laughs> and, and and the and the pieces of material nice big fatty thick what six inches yep. thick plates oh man i love i love working with that how stuff. many barrels of chips did you make oh well, at least 25 I and, how, and yeah, how, how does the song go the chip song oh <laughs> my chip, da, 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 yeah, da, 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 da. my chips are bigger than Didn't yours. Know. My chips, <laughs> yeah. No, I couldn't. Bl- I came in uh, halfway through, and I was like, "What? How many barrels?" And that was only half. Yeah, that was well, yeah, half the grill. There's like ten barrels over there right now. I just, yeah, I still and we it. filled up one dumpster. So man, there's a lot of chips. A lot of chips. So, so the finished product was weighed how much? Eighty pounds. And then you started with how much material? 800 pounds. 800 pounds. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Damn. Good round nice. numbers. Super good. Super good. That is some serious removal. It was some serious removal. And it was extra fun getting to do it dry for camera. Yeah. You're welcome, everyone out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has that, we haven't dropped that yet, right? No. The not grill. Yet. It's, it's, been, it's been worked on. Oh, we'll man, get some that's sexy look good. shots at SEMA and stuff. And what did you use to rough that out? Mostly a core five end mill. Core five, yeah. Yeah, I was limited because the piece of material took up like the whole work envelope. Damn. So, you know, the material being, what was it, 30 by 40 by six inches. So, damn. It took up the whole table. So, when you have 30 by 40, I think that's the travel of that machine is 40 inch, yep. right? So, you had to allow for tool path. 
So, right, right. And that was why I had to go with a one inch end mill. Originally, oh, I had a program with a face mill to, got to you. most of it out. But so you couldn't get around yeah. that. Oh my! I was God. literally a half inch away from my tool setter, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching that kind of close. You know, that is crazy. Good stuff, Barry. Well, mm-hmm. we had the the minx being delivered, and he had programmed it for the minx, and that's a bigger table, yeah. so like yep. no issues. But with the electrical, with everything days like just one day means everything of succeeding and not succeeding right so he he had to switch up and change the program and then jump over there and uh do it on a bbm did Which, you i'll give titan credit because that's what he told me to do from the beginning <laughs> <laughs> he t- i was he, wondering if that was gonna come up <laughs> he, i knew it was gonna come t- up i forget where i was but he texts uh, me and he says hey i just reprogrammed the whole thing and i'm gonna do it on a bvm because i don't have time to do it on the minx that's not gonna be set up and i said oh that sounds great. You're doing exactly what I had asked you to do. <laughs> a month ago. A yeah. month ago. Yeah. Did, the, did the gas monkey guys, were they freaking out at all that you were like, hey, yeah, it's, it'll be there. It'll be you there. No, the, no. They, they weren't. I mean, they were worried, of course, because they only had a couple of days. Too, right. But, you know, they weren't texting me a lot asking, you know, like, hey, are you sure this is going to be done on right. time? But they were nervous. Yeah. As yeah. I was. Well, that's, you that's killed a, it. That's killed a it. testament, though, you know? And I think that uh, we have a big enough reputation in this industry to know that we're going to come through, whether it's rocket parts going up to space, you know? And Truly. it can, like, hold up an entire launch. MK-50. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you know, a grill that has to go to SEMA, which is their entire, like, they've been working on this thing, and they've put so that many months into ordering the materials and mm-hmm. getting everything built and like one vendor. No. So Sorry, good, we so don't good. have a grill. The truck is what it is, but we're going to put the black printed one on there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And I, I think at the end of the day, that that's that's what our, that's why I love this trade is because our trade deals with that specific thing every yeah, man. every day. Yep. Everybody has an assembly, they have a product. There's parts that go onto that assembly or product and and to get paid, they have to finish it. Yep. And those parts have to actually come from the vendor there and then pass inspection. So this one was actually pretty trick because you actually, we actually, who, who was it that actually printed that up? Uh, that was Caracal. So they, they make uh, large scale 3D printers that are like specifically tailored for large print parts. So, nice. Uh, this grill was like 80 inches long. So yes. it was a pretty, pretty big print. And they were able to get it done in just like one day. Yeah. So Dude, that time cool. lapse, that time lapse. I was just give gonna a, say, give them some love right there. Oh yeah. Oh man. hell they yeah. Were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, they they actually uh, we reached out to them and they said absolutely no problem. They had a big enough printer. They printed it up. It's crazy. They actually had the printer down here in Texas and they sold it. So they ended up printing it in Italy. Oh. And then I didn't sending even know. the yeah. grill over because the grill ended up getting scanned. You had to scan it. Yep. And then you sent the model to them. Then they printed it. Then you were able to assemble it. And then once it was assembled, you're like, okay, this is going to work. Now you had confidence to actually go and machine it. And because you're the professional you are, you just <laughs> like, no mistakes, man. It was, made it happen. And that's what I told Gas Monkey too while I was there. Like if it had not been for the 3D printed part, yeah. I, there's no way I would have had the confidence. Amazing. Right. Right. Spend all weekend knowing that there's a chance that it doesn't fit. Because right. you didn't inspect it, right? Right. Yep. right. And we, that would have been five thousand dollars worth of exactly. material. Yeah. That, exactly. would, that would have been no. an expensive fail yeah. for an article. And imagine, imagine the type of projects that are out there right now. And the we, we keep talking about rockets and aerospace, but every every single industry, all like cars, everything has to be produced and stuff. And if the parts don't come perfect, you are absolutely screwed. Yep. Which leads us into the most oh. important. <laughs> so I love inspection with a passion. And I, and you don't from hear the that beginning, very often. <laughs> yeah, right. From, you from do the not. beginning, that from the call. beginning, I would call this guy my traffic cop. And and I think it I think it's an important thing to like for leaders to hear that you have to give the responsibility to your inspection department. You know, you got you got to keep them accountable. Make sure that we're doing everything correct. But you you can't be stepping in. You know, and so I came up with a name for him a long time ago, 
And he took it so serious. So I'd always be like, he's a traffic cop. He's a traffic cop. He's my ca- traffic cop. You know what I mean? Nope, don't talk to me. Go talk to Travis. <laughs> if Travis okays it, then I'm okay. Good. You know? And then all of a sudden, he's got this mustache over mustache here. Mustache came you know after the mean? title. And yeah, oh, mustache man. came after the title. Oh man! <laughs> the I mean, if you're gonna, if you're going to be called a cop, I mean, I guess you might as well have a stash, man. The stash is in, man. It's in. Absolutely, so good. So good. Yeah. He's it's, grown into it. It's Movember tomorrow yeah, too, so you, you're right. going to be in there oh, anyway. You can, you're right. just ahead of the game. Uh-huh. So good. And like you know, it's funny because if you watch the TV show a decade ago, this guy was actually working here, and so you see him and Tyson, and they're literally like kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back They're the like day. kids mm-hmm. and then not calling you old, but like that was uh, a I've, decade. I've gotten of, older. It's been you know a while. What I mean? yeah. yeah. So it's 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 great just yeah, just working with you, seeing you grow all these times and all over the years and then seeing you like get kids and family and then your kids are getting old and seeing you go from you know, when we were in uh California and I came over and I said, Hey, what about moving to Texas? And you looked at me kind of like, hmm. And then now you're in a beautiful house that you own. I was like, you can it's, move out of a duplex and you can have your own house. Oh, you me, know? me and me and Lindsay talk about it all the time. It's it's the best move we made. And really, I mean, this company really has been such a part of our family through everything, right? I can, I can still remember, I remember wanting to work here, if I can tell that story yeah, real quick. Man. I mean, I remember, I was, so I was working at another machine shop, right? Did and you I, say the name? They were just here. Okay, they were just here. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Martin Sprocket and Gear. They, yeah. they were originally based out of Texas Zachary. here, but they yep. had, they were based out of, I think Arlington was the okay, first yep. one. And they had spread out to uh, Sacramento and they had a plant out there since the 70s, I think. Yep. And it was an old plant. It had the, the old bell that would go off, like, eh, it was lunch. But <laughs> but I did love it. I did. That's where I fell in love, really, with manufacturing. I remember the smell, and I loved it. But I knew I really wasn't going to go anywhere. And that's no disrespect to Martin. I just knew that I had places I wanted to go, and it wasn't going to be there. And I remember looking for a job, and I think I, I think I saw a post on Craigslist, and it was your shop. And it was Titan America back then. It was Titan America Manufacturing. And so I looked you up on the internet, And I just knew immediately I wanted to work there. I don't know what it was. You know, I'm not sure, but I remember seeing the guys. I remember seeing the parts. I remember reading the descriptions, which now I know kind of come from you. And you could hear that passion and and what the shop did and what the shop was about. And I remember I applied and I didn't hear back. I didn't get the job. But I, I, I remember this day I had a whiteboard on my computer desk and I wrote down right on the top right there, Titan America MFG. And I told my wife, I was like, I'm gonna work there. And I think I applied so two cool. more times. So and still, I, and then I came in, I remember uh, interviewing with uh, Stefan, I think it was back mm-hmm. then. I remember meeting you for the first yep. time and I looked up your name and so I, uh, Mr. Titan Gilroy, I remember. And uh, oh, I remember that, it was cool, you know? I, I told myself I was gonna work there and now here we are, man, and a house, two kids and a dog later here in Texas <laughs> and couldn't be more blessed. <laughs> and when you were doing your- And some your cats. Re- and some, right? and some cats. cats. The Three cats, yeah. cats, unfortunately. So <laughs> there, there's a story to that too, but. Yeah. And so, when you were doing your research right i remember this vividly when when he was putting everything together you know machine shops in general don't have great websites Mm -hmm. right that was always one of these things with our trade it was like oh they want business but the website was just kind of an afterthought right and his was just this crazy it's that artist it was the artist i remember going wait what is this this is just there, gorgeous you could tell there was, there was passion for the trade even yeah. in the website right yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and as soon as i met you and i remember i think i watched one of the one of like the teaser videos or something i just knew i remember going home and showing my wife and telling her i got the job and showed her that little the little teaser video i found it and yeah, we weren't even doing the stuff. tv show we yet. we weren't no we weren't nope. it was just it was just like a prequel you know and yeah. so People, so people. what year was that what year did you go 2013 13 yep. mm-hmm. nice nice in nice, august nice. yeah so heck yeah crazy and that and then that was right when we were starting the tv show it was i think it was probably like i say i've told this story before but it must have been man it was months after i started and you called everybody into inspection and we were all standing there i remember i was the new guy and i was standing on that side edge and you were on the other side of the granite and you had told us that you know we had signed a, a contract with mad tv or whatnot yeah. we were going to start a tv show and i remember just looking around be like where am i <laughs> what, what is this what just yeah. did I, I just got i landed with the machine shop we're doing a reality 
television show. Right. And I remember telling my my wife, and she was like, "What? That's so crazy!" And so, <laughs> little did I know how far we were going to go, and how excited I am just to see how, see how far we have left to go. Crazy, yeah. so, right? No, yeah. doubt we're still about on that. the ground Good floor. Yeah. We are. And it, was, it was it was crazy because we uh, even before the. 08, 09 downturn, yep. you know, and I always say those years gave me my voice. Like I always was fighting and I always had passion, but it wasn't until I saw so many companies go out of business and, mm. and understand that they didn't have to, they just were running at a small percentage of their capabilities, their potential. And it's like, how do you reach these people? You know, but yeah. I was always passionate about it. But then when 08, 09 happened, that's when it was like, okay, I love machining, but there has to be something more. I want to make a difference. And, 100%. And just dedicated the whole company towards that vision. But it was like in 2010, we started making vis uh, videos and sizzles and, and trying to, and we had the idea, we're going to sell this. I was like, we're going to sell this. But it wasn't until 2013 that we actually sold it and got paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. actually had a contract to put it on national television worldwide ended up being worldwide television and stuff so quite the process it wasn't just like somebody Overnight. showed up and said no hey sure. we want you to do a tv show right. and and we're going to give you a bunch of money well that's work right i mean so much i think sometimes it's easy to see success and think that it was overnight and you yeah. don't know uh, the backstory and all yeah. the work and the and the and the sleepless nights and the weekends that go into it right? exactly yeah. and, and at that time nobody had ever done it mm -mm. people now they say like well if I was in your shoes, like I would do it too. And it's like, then go get in <laughs> my <laughs> shoes. Yeah. You know? Go get in go. my shoes. You know? I say, I say that all in. the time. Then go do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, exactly. get on, make a video, put yourself yeah. out there. Yeah. So. But Travis, from the moment that he started, he had a, he had the right attitude. He wanted greatness. And uh, I remember we actually, uh, he asked me for some time one day and then he, he came in and he said, hey, you know, I love how the whole company's going. I know, I love how this is going and, and stuff, but it's like, your lathe department, I want to take your lathe department to greatness. And these are some things that we can do and stuff. Oh, and, mm -hmm. and nice. Instantly, I just, I love that. That he can go put the time in, he can make the parts, he can program, he can do all the things that are under his job description. But he comes to me on the side with, with notes and, and a, a document and stuff saying that, hey, here is a plan that I put together that can help us actually take the the lathe department to greatness. If we get these new chucks or these new tools or a different toolbox, if and he starts laying out like different plans and stuff, and and I always tell people like your job description is bottom level. Yeah, mm -hmm. what you do from true. there 100%. is going to make you for life, and that's and everything, right? You, absolutely. Just because your d job description says X, yeah. go above and beyond. Yeah. Put your if, own spin on if, it all. If you end at your job description, you just set your ceiling. You're right just there. clocking in and clocking out. Mm -hmm. yeah. No issues. But no, you know what he was doing? He did help us. Him and Tyson were like great in mm. the in the late department, and and the whole thing just kept going up and up and we made some incredible parts but at the time that he came in that was like right when you know so we were probably doing blue origin parts for like good four years we're doing spacex parts for more than that we're doing complicated parts mm -hmm. you know and by by having that attitude to say hey i'm gonna come in here and take your laid department to greatness what are you actually doing you're solving a problem of mine. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. Because a lot of times, like, I'll have it in my head that we need to do these things, but I don't have the time right now to actually put towards it. So having somebody step up and say, hey, I'm here to partner with you, to help you, to do something that's important to you, which was something that I would always say to the employees. Remember, I'd have those talks. Like, mm -hmm. like you want to rise in this company, then love Love what's important sure. like to me. You know what I mean? No like if, if we have these vices in the back and they're they're all they they haven't been cleaned well and, and they're rusting up and stuff, that's important to me. 100%. So go back there, grab them, take time and actually clean these things up, make them beautiful and and like help the shop. If if you actually take care of what I care about, we're going to be incredibly tight. Heck yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that he became that guy. So 
as like Ste Stefan was uh, operations manager, huge experience. I mean, this guy lived in China at, at, and he built plants in China and he built plants over here and just like a lot of knowledge and stuff. And then he ended up uh, moving on. And then I needed somebody to help me with like all of our aerospace work. And yeah. I just needed somebody that could like be that guy to just like help me, you know, like, I was doing all the quotes, so it's like, hey, let's you know grab the prints, grab the material, grab the this, give me the package so I can like see everything, and then work with we can work together and actually uh, get all these quotes done and stuff. So I and started really relying had, on Travis. And you had inspection already, right? You had yeah, a yeah, full we had, we QA had a great, department. We had, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a mm -hmm. Michael Donahue. Yep, good yep. old, good old Sean, man. I still Sean. Ah, I screwed that <laughs> That's up. All right. Oh my God, Sean! Sean, I'm so. It was Mr. Donahue. <laughs> you know, Donahue. My, my old wrestling yeah. coach is Michael Donahue. Oh, okay. So it, it just shout came out to in him. You came you know in your head. head. Mm -hmm. Yep. But well, you know what's funny? Sean, me. Sean Donahue. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. The Jiu Jitsu man. <laughs> yeah. Now, Sean was great people. <laughs> Having been a machinist for so long, you know, I've worked with like two different types of quality people, and a lot of them I haven't gotten along with. But Travis is different. So, you know, the two types that I've seen in my career have been like, you know, I make this complicated part and I give it to the guy at the CMM and the first dimension he checks is wrong. He pulls the thing off the CMM, throws the, re the report at me with just one dimension on it and says, well, that part's bad. Where the other type like Travis will look at the part as a whole and they'll say, hey, these two things are off and here's what I think your problem might be. So it kind of gives me, you know, a, a path forward to figure out what I have messed up either in my program or on my machine or in my tooling. So, you know, I like the quality guys that are willing to lend a helping hand and not just say, throw it back you know, at you. Yeah. yeah good, I mean, bad. you know, I guess pun intended, that's the only type of quality, quality guy. You got to have somebody who's, who's intentional about trying to, it's a team effort, right? I think, I think yes. sometimes it's, it's a tendency for quality to see themselves as isolated from the rest of the production totally. process. Right. Yeah, totally. and, and like, they're just this department of, of no, 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 as opposed to how can we get it done? How can we solve this problem that's together? Right. How can we do this as a team? And really, that's kind of a even a shout out back to Sean, right? He kind of taught me that. I can tell you, even when I was a machinist, I remember going in there and that guy would work with me. He'd run CMM reports. I'd be checking parts out on the floor. I'd come in, ask him what we might be wrong. How do we need to move this? And just that relationship, I think, really kind of helped me develop that notion of collaboration. That, helped, that's yeah, what it helps makes the whole good, company. Exactly. It's yeah. collaboration. And how good is that, like just having the background on in machining and then becoming a QA guy? Oh, Almost right? invaluable. Just, yeah. It's priceless. invaluable. It's priceless. Oh, 100% really. agreed. You, you having to know what the struggle is like on the floor, That's right. you know, because look, machinists care about what they do. Yep. I care about what I do. You don't want to get parts wrong. You know, you want to get it right. You want to do a good job. And having a quality guide that can help guide you and help you along that way, like I say, invaluable. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely sure. agreed. And if, if you look at how he was, you know, having, like, he started the company because he loved the passion that was, like, on the website. And he's like, wow, these guys are passionate about something that I care about. And then he came in, and then he was passionate about fixing things and helping things rise and, and, and all of that. And then he carried that right into inspection. So everything That's that great. you just said, Barry, is exactly who he is because he is a machinist. He does want to see the company thrive. He wants to be able to stand on a foundation of quality and understand that anything that's going out our door is not just meeting the spec, but it's exceeding the spec that nice. it is actually, you're giving them parts where, I love when they call it jewelry, yeah. they open up the box and, and, and open it up and they, they just pull out jewelry, you know, and He's that guy, man, and it, and it's been it's been just such a good ride, you know. That is what I, it is too. When you look at parts, that's I, I there was Hamilton Company up in Reno. This old guy Jerry Raider that I used to call, and he goes, "We don't make parts here. We make jewelry." I love that, and yeah. that's a great. It is. Mm -hmm. It's you. It has to look. You're spending a lot of money on those parts. You're doing work for these incredible companies that are relying, like you said, on yeah. you to meet everything that they've given you and. To make it look and just especially that good. makes good manufacturers. Yes, Maybe it I'm does. just going to prop up Trevor a little bit. You see these people at these Instagram pages. You know they take pictures of their parts. Yeah, they're proud of the work they've done. And if somebody is proud of that work, that's that's going to be a worker you're going to want to chase after. Trevor, yes. go forth Trevor on go Instagram. Forth. Mm -hmm. Has yeah. some beautiful parts on there, mm -hmm. and now he runs our additive and EDM. You know, oh, and, oh. and and to that point, I was telling Titan this just this morning. 
you know, when I've got a little bit of time during the day, I love going on CNC Expert, and there is mm. some amazing so cool. parts that people are posting on there, right? So, you know, you'll sit on there, and, and I love just, we were talking about how much we love parts, and we love the machining aspect, and these these posts that these guys are making, there is some insane yeah. quality, mm -hmm. insane Legit. quality yeah. on there. And it's so fun because not going to shops every day, being in my old gig like I used to do, and I get to see it all. I get to see the octopus every day, but I don't get to see all the other <laughs> yeah, stuff. You get to see the world now. I get to see mm -hmm. the, exactly. But these guys, I love that uh, CNC Expert is is coming along. It is coming along strong, and it's because the people that are putting all that content out there, and man, there's some nice stuff. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, super, super good. You know, uh, Sean Donahue, give him another prop, right? We were just talking about him. Yeah. It, it's, it's a proud moment for it was a very proud moment for me but spacex came in and they said hey we're waste that will actually bypass our inspection department and go straight on to the rocket not something nice. that i want to happen right, right. You know what I mean? right. Of can be nerve wracking but yes they, they had this test and then they actually we were one of the first ones to actually do the test where they brought in a a, a briefcase and different parts and stuff and i don't want to get into too, too much of the weeds but basically they inspect the parts you inspect the parts they know their exact numbers and you have to come up with the exact numbers and anybody based on pressure best or technique or anything with your tools you have to come up with the exact same numbers and stuff and out of everyone that tested sean is the only one in history up until I don't that know time, now yeah. at mm -hmm. that time he is the only one that got a hundred percent on the it. test wow. Just nailed and it. we we were the first that's ones awesome to ever Jeez. be inspection delegated by SpaceX and um, it was quite the achievement yeah Sean yeah, was great super Real cool good people that's and, amazing mm -hmm. that's a feat I, it's crazy and this this industry is levels you know, when when I was working at Nagy back in the day, when you used to back come and I, used to, I yeah. used to make all the crazy fixtures and just yep. have passion and do my thing. Did we have an inspector? Nope. 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 I used to inspect my own parts. Yep. And, and like, <laughs> I've been there. Zero rejects. <laughs> but but it's like I would just change, make adjustments and stuff, and I just change and I would inspect the other machinist parts, and we would like you know double check each other's stuff. But then we didn't have like the owner of the company didn't want to spend money on a quality manager or inspector or anything like that. And we we made great parts, you know. But I always knew that it could be better. Yeah. Right. So when I started our company, Titans of CNC, then all of a sudden it was like from the before I even had the 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 starting place, the first 4,000 square feet that we talked about in a in a different podcast, I was already making my quality manual. That's what I- was I, already setting the foundation how? for quality. What did you, so uh, you, you jumped into exact, so not having quality beforehand, but knowing how important it is, because right when I sold machines, everyone would say, oh, you need a CMM if you're gonna get, you know, ISO or ITAR, you gotta have quality, but nobody ever kind of used it. And then if you don't have it, what, how did you know where to go? What were the steps you took to get that manual together? Well, I was I was a good, you know, I was a good student. Oh, heck so yeah. even though we didn't have it at our facility, I had contract program for big companies. Yep. I had I had worked at different things, so I I understood what needed to happen. You know, so then as we we came into our own shop, it was kind of like okay, quality manual most important thing from the beginning because I need to sell myself to the customers. Yep. We're starting out with mm -hmm. these different customers, but when they come in, I need something to show them, to show them the process, to show them why we will never fail with yeah. their parts. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you have to document everything. And that's why I love AS9100. That's why I love these different certifications because it just forces you to document what you actually do. And everybody's scared of it, but it's actually brilliant because nobody, once you document what the process is, there's nobody that can stand there and say, I don't know. Right. He wasn't here to, he didn't spend the time with me. He, it's right there. This is how it starts. This is how it ends. Follow the process and stuff. Yeah, so, 100%. yeah, I was, I was always about it. But then there's a lot of people like starting in their own companies and, and in the garages and, and with small shops and, and I think that uh, we're a good example of understanding, okay, what do we need? Micrometers, calipers, 
Joe Blocks, Gage Blocks. We always I like mess around. <laughs> we, we mess around with that one, you know. <laughs> you know, t- calibration, you know, height gauge, granite table, uh, pins, you know, and, uh, you know, up to probably like from, what is it? 11 thousandths to one inch or something. Yeah, you know what I mean? That standard range. standard uh, range. And like, that's a good start to a quality, quality sh- shop. It, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, to your quality room and stuff. And then one thing that as we, what we did was we actually, we grew and purchased, grew and purchased. So as I actually brought in new customers and brought in new work, based on what the thread sizes were, if I if I didn't have like a, you know, 3 16 18 or something, I would just be like, okay, I'm gonna go buy a go no mm-hmm. gauge for this. So yep. I'd buy it per the job, per this. And sometimes I do the NRE char- um, charges mm-hmm. and stuff. And then basically just purchase as we go. And we just, we ended up just going. But once we, we got grew. to SpaceX and once we got to Rockets, then it was like, then I went out and spent 125000 on a CMM. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and you got to. You got yeah, to. It's, it's validation it the for the level. customer. It's reassurance from the customer that you're, that you're doing work for, that you know what you're doing. You know, these guys that don't have quality and they're just saying, oh, no, my don't worry. My parts are good. I That's, programmed yeah. it right. I programmed <laughs> yeah. it right, right? There's too many other variables that that part can not come out right, mm-hmm. whether and, you programmed it right or not. And all their machinists use their own tools and yes. nobody calibrates those tools. So it's like, you don't even know what you're using. And how, like, how can you guarantee that, you know? No, for sure. But it's, it's good memories, man. I. I've always looked at, I wanted to just have a clean, perfect shop. And I remember buying the Cadillac gauge for like the high gauge. Yeah. What was that, like six grand? I'm not sure. So I, I wasn't there when you bought the original Cadillac, but oddly enough, where I remember when we switched, we sold the Cadillac gauge, if you remember correctly. And do you remember who we sold it to? I don't remember. It was Sean Donahue. No, <laughs> that's great. He, loved it. he worked he with loved it for it. so yeah. long. That's he great. loved it. It was time to move that's on. Right. And that's I right. reached out to him. He's like, "Yeah, I want the Cadillac gauge." That's of course. great. Yeah. That's yeah. great. What did you replace it with? Um, so, well, we were going to uh, we're we're mid to Toyo, right? You okay. know, stuff like that. And yep, so yep. we had our we had our linear height gauges and stuff that basically gave us a little more uh, speed and precision. Precision. The Tessa, all that. Yeah, the Tessa right. and stuff yeah. like that. The Cadillac gauge was good, but we just were looking for something to be a little bit quicker. And yeah. Stuff. So the, and you had a mid to Toyo. CMM too, was it Minchin Toyo? No, not back then. We do, oh, we do now. We have yeah, multiple we ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember. I knew that we sold Minchin Toyo, and then I thought, oh man, I couldn't remember what you guys had back then. But everything that they've got, it's in that that's inspection one hundred and one right there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That that brings it like yeah, we got like the My Star, uh, and then that's like a great little product. Yeah, Minchin Toyo CMM that is built for like industrial use you can have it shop in floor. the yeah. shop and then basically coolant can rain down and it does not affect it which is awesome oh we got to see it and firsthand then, in japan so, that's yeah. i was leading oh, yeah, into sorry, that so and then <laughs> nice he comes over here and works for us and then he ends up going to japan to actually film at the plants that they make those my stars so good and then they have the Meister, right? Is it Meister or Meister, uh, like the employees? That's the Meister. Yeah, that's Meister, the Meister. Right? It's the similar. Meister. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. It's spelled different? It is spelled different, you know, at least yeah. from English. I'm not sure about the uh, Japanese that, characters. I think it's a German word, actually. I think you're right. It means like teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They were like the master teachers who had really true masters of their craft. You know what, you know? Maybe you can say a little bit about what they do. I think that was great. Uh, well, the Meisters, you're going to have to pardon if I miss some of the details here, but they've been working there for a long time. They had patches that signified their level of excellence. And so nice. they had them throughout the plants, depending on what their job was. They were there to basically train the youth, and they were they were really the, they were the keepers of the knowledge. They were the keepers of the skill, the people that, that wouldn't let that knowledge get lost, right? And That's they would awesome. pass that down, and they would have other apprentices come in and train under them. So mm. like I say, they had different skills and different titles, depending on where you were in the shop. But it was really a way for them to keep really you know their trade secrets their trade knowledge and make sure that it gets passed on and it doesn't yeah. get lost from in a, generation in a weird, to generation in a weird type of way not saying that you know it's the same but we're kind of like meisters on youtube yeah. and our academy because we're bringing awareness to the world we're bringing kids and we're showing machinists and we're showing like from small from you know fundamentals to high-end productivity crazy pallet systems we're showing the entire gamut and making sure that 
people know about it. No, right? 100%, so absolutely. Not comparing us to, but it's the same thing, man. Like keep those secrets. But you got to pass that on. Pass it on. Otherwise it, it dies, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, and I think today most people do realize that there is a little bit of a, a gap there. I mean, I talked to some of the older gentlemen and stuff like that, and they all talk about they don't necessarily have, you know, people to pass on. So us being able to reach I think the youth and the younger people mm -hmm. like we do is an important is super important for the industry to make sure that the that that the industry skills and the drive, you know, to greatness and excellence just continues and gets passed on. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I think everywhere I've ever worked at there's been a problem with tribal knowledge. You yep. know, like 100%. there's only one Absolutely. guy who knows how all this stuff works and then when he quits or retires or whatever it goes with him. Yeah, it goes with him. But what we do then is make that tribal knowledge common knowledge. Yeah, and I think that's a, a really big deal for everybody I talk to. Right? Absolutely, and, and, and I think if you if you couple the the knowledge, the giving the knowledge to you know like the hands on stuff, right, with the documentation, like even if you're not doing AS ninety one hundred and you you can't afford that jump, I think that it's important to start looking at the different sections of your company and the different types of parts you do and the process and and you know from could be anodizing could be anything and start documenting everything so you don't lose that yeah. so yeah. like if Travis leaves and he's the one that that does the document if we go to you know anodize something type 2 or type 3 or whatever like we don't lose his knowledge because mm -hmm. it's documented when we do this, this is the, the procedure that we go yep. through. Yep. This is what we do. You know, we ask for this and blah, blah, blah. And then when it, when the parts come back, this is the process that we go through. It's, and I think everybody can just keep doing that. Well, well and that's just good preparatory work too, right? I mean, that's what AS9100 is, exactly. is process control, right? Yep. So even though you're not necessarily ready to take that deep dive, you can document your process and you can set that mindset, right? You can get yourself in that practice of doing that. And then you're just really doing all the preparatory work for when it does come time to dive into that pool, you know how to swim. And think about like all of what you guys said also makes perfect sense if you want to hit those big companies, the Boeings, the Blue Origins, the SpaceXs, the Lockheeds, the Honeywell, they're not going to look at you if you don't have quality. Mm -hmm. they, you, oh, absolutely You, you not. might do second or third tier through, but even that, I've, I've, got, I've known guys throughout the years that have done second tier Boeing. They got to have full quality sh inspection. You know, you can't do it without. So leading up to that, maybe starting ISO, then going AS, then getting those certifications as you build your shop are so important because, again, you never know a big guy comes knocking at your door and you you gotta you gotta reel them in. You gotta have quality. It's a hundred percent. Well, I like how Titan mentioned how even from the very beginning, right? It, it, it's a mindset. Quality is a mindset. Process control is a mindset. Yeah. And so starting out, you know, wanting to document how you do everything and how you make changes, how you implement changes, how you sustain changes is just a great way to go into any any shop environment and just Heck start yeah. planning your future. Heck yeah, awesome. absolute. You know, back to that my star real quick. A good little story. So I I knew that Michitoya was coming out with it i had heard about it and shop floor cmms were starting to get a little bit of pub out there and then i get a call from one of my really good friends at uh, taurus fab up in auburn california Bo oh, Bo. okay Bo. Yeah, Bo. Mm -hmm. stud yeah. him and his family they're great uh but he called me he's like hey what do you know about this mind star i'm like oh yeah it's great i had, didn't even i'd never seen one before he's like <laughs> i just saw a titans video he goes you got to come up and, and sell me one of these so literally because of that that's when i knew like it was kind of shifting over in, in your direction like things were getting real mm. out there he literally saw that video he's like gotta have one so i made you money I didn't you even made get me a money cut. Yeah, I, took <laughs> you <lunch laughs> for that. I took you to lunch well you know that <laughs> that my star actually blew my mind because yeah. something that was always extremely annoying to me was you know i'd be in a rhythm making a part I'd be in my groove then I'd bring it to quality and they'd be like okay see you in 24 hours yeah, it's got to right. normalize yeah. come back the, tomorrow yeah yes. come back tomorrow and right. it's like well okay so my machine's just going to sit here for the next 24 hours yep but super cool that that thing you can just hook the probes to it right and it it's a thermal compensation right so you're able to measure the temperature of the part and then it's able to compensate for where it's supposed to be when it's in that 68 degrees fahrenheit yeah that's nice huge time crazy right huge yep. time saver. oh yeah for sure and I, the fact I, I, Go ahead. I was going to say, and the fact that, you know, I don't have the quality guy yelling at me because I didn't wipe right. all the cooling off the part. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know what's funny about uh, Travis is that <laughs> even when we're not running production, 
his quality room is at 68. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> my you're going man, in there I'm, and, I'm, and I'm like, it's, 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 it's cold, a benefit you know? to my life. Like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's just like, no, this is where it needs to be. I'm like, you well, know, it's 107 usually in Texas, so 68 is perfect. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. That's where I go relax at. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. One of the things that I think we did well, especially bringing in big companies, is uh, you know when we like with the shop management, with the way that we had our routers, the way that we had our barcodes, mm-hmm. the way that we set it up in the shop. So right when you walk out. There was the computers right yeah. there. You had your scanner right there. I was able to take customers, potential customers, walk them right past the machines, yeah. grab any router at any time, walk them right through the process, show them how many parts were being machined, how many were good, how many were rejected, seeing the the green tags and the red tags. Hopefully we didn't have any red tags, but if there were, they were like taken out. They were putting in a, a separate room in a cage, mm-hmm. you know, and, just to complete, you know, how we did all of it was like super good. And even before we actually started doing our AS9100 and, and all that, we had that part down. And I think it's super important that customers come in and they actually see that you actually have your process is just flawless. We 100%. talked about it early, but I think that um, there's a lot of companies that don't really understand that even in mm. process, you know, understanding what tools, you know, from having your inspection tools and having a third party calibrate them for you, having the documentation to show the customer, therefore you can you understand that the tools that you're using are perfect yep. to actually check their parts which matters, mm-hmm. you know, and and even like in process inspections at the the machine where you have separate or you're logging uh, different tools out to the shop and understanding what ones can go out to the shop and tagging those keeping those in a box uh our our nice little like uh what do you call them like our inspection, our inspection trays, trays that we yep. always put on every single table take care, where of, like the tools, put take by care of them two yep it's like one foot by two feet, you know, and we put the rubber in there and it's like, hey, inspection tools on this table in front of this machine, they must be kept here. They're never mm-hmm. on the table and left and stuff. I think we've had a lot of really good things that we've shown in our videos and stuff. Um, what kind of like advice do you have like to just machinists and, and machine shop owners from small to large on like that kind of stuff? You know what I mean? Like well, just watch all the videos. And- Man, uh, but I think you know the one thing that, in all honesty, w- what I got from you is because is, is, I've moved through the shop, right? I've worked it. I've worked as a machinist, and I've been in the operations, and a supervisor, and inspection, and stuff like that. Care about what you do. Yeah, I mean, care about what you do. That's that's so, the simplest thing. If you start there, really, I think everything else follows. We cared about how we took care of our inspection tools. We cared about our process. We cared about making the parts and making sure they got segregated so the customer requirements were met. We cared about what we did, and that would probably be my number one piece of advice start there and it still goes on today right like we got people that come in here visitors into this shop and if they're not offered a shirt within the first five minutes right i mean you you care about the people you're bringing in and and what i love about qa and it's it's different than the rest of the shop but what you just said all of that that you put into it you are so proud of that when a customer comes in it's easy to just Mm -hmm. They get it because they see how proud you are of putting what you did together because it is so, like I said, different than the rest of the shop. Yeah. Whatever whatever energy and whatever you put into that, it's going to show 10 times when that customer comes through and, and you show them. 100%. It goes over amazingly well. And something, something I've been thinking a lot about just as we're talking about quality is how important it is for the machinist and quality to have a good rapport with each other. Oh, no doubt. Because like as a machinist, it's so easy for me to spend you know a month making this thing that I think is beautiful mm-hmm. and perfect and then this guy tells me it's garbage. You're terrible. <laughs> and it's so easy to get mad at him for that when right. really, you know, it's bad because of me. Right. But like if you have a good rapport with each other and like one thing I always try to do was help the quality guys. Like yeah. if there was something like they needed a model tweaked or something to, you know, make it easier to measure, you know, 
strange occurrences, but things happen where quality guys have actually needed my help. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> or or a, th- a fixture, man. You need right. fixtures yeah. for yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. 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 And there's been a lot of times where like I would get a model that was modeled to the minimum of tolerance and, mm-hmm. you know, CMM was having trouble with it. So I would yep. tweak it to, to make it nominal. Mm-hmm. But, uh, just working together like that is super important because then you become friends and then yep. it's a lot easier to, to work together and not get upset when it's like, oh man, Barry, this thing is scrappy. Man, I, I think probably from a quality perspective, look, your parts are our parts. They're they're our parts, right? And yeah. I, I think that perspective goes a long ways. You know, I'm not trying to reject her. I mean, I want that part to pass just as much as you do, yeah. right? Because it's my part as well. So. Ooh, yeah. ownership! Look yeah. at that, yeah. ownership. Ownership. some Jocko right. stuff right there. <laughs> there you oh, go, man. man. There you go. Yeah. So Jocko. Good. I dig the Jocko. Yeah, you know? no doubt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That guy's a beast. I, yes, I think sir. that uh, we always we always talk about we we're showing excellence. We're showing everything. I'm always talking about you know precision is in everything mm-hmm. from the tables and how yep. how you place things on everything. the tables and you know put your parts and i always say like never have one at 180 like have all parts facing the same direction like an like a military army strategic you Lined know like up. they're I think going that's to probably battle why I liked you know you so much i love that so it was so it was so me i was like oh i can do that all day yeah perfect, perfect. <laughs> if, if you right? have them all if you have them all lined up you got you got a you know 100 different parts all lined up perfectly you will walk past and just see it like you will see a yeah. flaw like, yep. like you can see you literally can see just like a couple thousands off you'll be able to point it out and uh you know like i'll point that out yeah. every, every, <laughs> no, time. every time every time walk past. everywhere parts pictures on the wall it doesn't matter man <laughs> oh, oh, pictures on the wall oh, yeah. so titan just got me a picture for my office this <laughs> you beautiful yeah. i did i hung it up me and chris i gave him an opportunity <laughs> I gave an opportunity. <laughs> I kept looking at this blank wall you know what i mean and i was like this guy's good at sales but maybe he's not good at decoration <laughs> no so, you no know. my decorating skills needed help so he gets this beautiful picture the seventh hole pebble beach beautiful painting and I get it up there. Chris and I go into my office and we put it up and Titan walks by. He goes, first of all, it's not centered. So <laughs> why don't you start over? And it wasn't. Yeah. It was so mm-hmm. off. And yeah. I wasn't even thinking center, oh, right? He, the machinist here. And then when we did it the second time, I said, okay, Chris, we got to get it right this time. He's like, okay, he takes the tape out and measures it. He goes, it's three sixteenths off this way. I'm like, ow, it's close though. He's like, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna let you slide. <laughs> so great, but that's how they were it, arguing with me on like it's true, and I was like, no, I'm telling you, I'm it, telling he you. He saw it from a mile uh-huh. away. I'm looking at it, going, no, that's pretty good. And I said, I put the level on it, and it was off. Like the tilt was off. Uh-huh. It was so bad. That's, that's the culture thing, though, right? It is, you know, it's but a that's what I love too. You build in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah you know, hundred percent. So if you're precise with your pictures, you'll be precise with your parts. No you know, doubt. We, we have so. a on the wall over here. We have a trauma kit. So it's important, like safe, safety is something that is super important in the shop. And you're dealing with machines that will kill you. So it was cool because we had an ex-employee that actually, her husband was actually a fire chief. So instead of just having the standard, you know, bandages and all that that are required by OSHA and stuff, we actually, I talked to him and said, hey, if, make me a kit that if somebody cuts their arm off, that we can take care of them. Hello. You know what I mean? So he created this crazy uh, trauma kit. And then uh, I was like, hey, let's go put it on the wall right there. So let's make like a a thing and we'll put up a sign up there and stuff. And then uh, Travis kind of coached somebody else who actually mm-hmm. put it on the wall. And then it's funny because I came, I came in, I don't know, it was like right after they finished and I wasn't even I thinking think it about it. I think it was the next day. It was like the next day. day. Yeah. I walk in in the morning, then I walk past the wall, and then and then like I walk past and I look at it, and then like back up and I look at it, and then all of a sudden I hear like them cracking up and stuff. Because it was it was off. It, it was it was off. It was crazy. Well, I had said in the beginning, I was like, you There's know, he's no gonna see it. Way that's gonna get by. He's like, no, no, it'll be fine. I'm like, I'm telling you right now, we can leave it for fun. I love but it. There's no way that's I getting love past. It. And it was like the next day, you walk by like Travis, this uh. This sign, right? I just knew immediately. I know. I was like, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Travis. People know me. Like, like no way. Uh, yeah, I told you. I told that's you. why anytime I walk through here and I see somebody like unwrapping a painting or something, I just high speed go get the them, other get way. As far away yep, as I can. Yep. I don't want a part of <laughs> it. Yeah. But I think that, um, like, we joke around about that, but I think that leadership, a lot of people talk about culture they talk about their quality and they talk about their guys not caring and they talk about different things i started like leading into this earlier 
but it's like we we talk about a lot of great things in our videos because we're like we're showing you how things should be or we're showing you something so fantastic that it's possible and different things but when it comes to quality you know we're a real shop mm. and we've gone through our struggles and we've learned over the years and and even though we were good from the beginning we kept stepping up into harder parts, mm -hmm. more difficult parts and difficult materials and then running them on machines that were subpar. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That you had to chase those yeah, tolerances to and yeah, you had to work for it and stuff. And so as big as like at one point we were 55 employees, but you know, when we were just kind of like grinding at, you know, 30 something employees or something, it was like we came to a spot where we're making rocket parts for many different companies, and they're Inconel parts, they're A286 parts, they're Hanes 188 parts, they're steel parts, and and tight tolerances to tenths, like point zero 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 one, right? Hello. And sometimes those things, like we we would like we would like separate them, red tag them. But then we wouldn't have enough parts. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wouldn't have enough mm -hmm. parts. So it's like, it's well, they're only a tenth out. Mm. So my guys, like a lot of the machinists would be like, you know, they're only a tenth out. And I would I would be like, this is a $5,000 part. Mm -hmm. This is a $900 part. You know what I mean? That's $1,000. That's $5,000. That's, that's $50,000. And I'm like, I know it's still functional. So I would, I would. I'd call these places mm -hmm. and I'd ask them. I'm like, hey, we have this so much good. We have these. They're only a tenth out or two tenths out or whatever. And and like, do, would you still want them? And yeah. they'd say yes. Or I'd even say, or you can get these and I'll give them to you for 50% off or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was willing to give them, you know? Yeah. And we were talking about jewelry before and I used to love when – you know, America's favorite rocket company. We talked about them already. Like these engineers and quality guys would call me and they say, man, we had a pile of people walking, walking up and actually looking at the box, looking at how the parts were wrapped, how perfect it was and looking at the finishes and looking at how like it was just jewelry. Like you literally could just put that on a chain, you know? And I took such pride in in hearing those stories. But then all of a sudden, every time I made a phone call, then they would have to go and talk to the different manufacturing engineers and, and machinists and, and, you know, engineers and stuff like that to see if they would actually pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time I made a call to say, hey, we're a tenth out, they would have to go and, and assemble. And instead of talking about jewelry, they'd be like, these parts are bad. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Can we Can we go? And they would most of the time, almost every single time, they would actually like sign them off and mm -hmm. say, yeah, we're good because they need the parts. Yeah. Because they have an assembly and it's only a tenth out. But I, I don't remember exactly what happened. But one day... I just I I think I think I got some crap on from one of the customers and stuff and and I was just understanding that my guys are great. These guys have the ability if they if they consistently are out one tenth, they can be consistently intolerant. In yeah, you know. Yeah. So I think a big change in our company culture was a lot of these guys were like, they were accepting that it was still okay. Right. And they were consistent in ex in understanding that it was still okay. And then one day I called the entire company. You remember that? I do. I called the entire company into, we had a pretty big quality room. We all, we all just like went in there and I, and I basically just put it down. I just said, look, no more. That's it. I'm making no calls ever. If it's a 10th out, it's scrap. Travis, it's a 10th out, you know? Mm -hmm. Sean, it's a 10th out, it's scrap. And I made the law, and guess what happened? Never anymore. We make good parts. Bang. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But they knew that they saw the seriousness in my in my face, and they saw that like I was done. Yeah. Like, that's... like. I built a reputation for machining and machining incredible parts. And now 
you know, I have machinists under me, you know, but that's still my workman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's still my company. Your you know name's I mean? on the door. Yep, and at the end of the you day, like, the phone that's, calls. that's yeah. not what I'm about. No, for sure. So we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. You know, you got to have that leadership. And, and I've always kept that same kind of kind of thing. Well, you and know, I, still, where, I still like to say that that bled down into the rest of the company, too. No. When we made when we had no exceptions there, there weren't exceptions elsewhere. Right. Those are the habits that go down to how well you take care of the bathrooms of your table of yeah. all these little things. How well do you, do you, do you sweep up at the end of the day? Yep. Excellence breeds excellence. And, and I always like to say that that change, I think, had ripple effects throughout the entire company. Yeah, yeah. But so. it's hard. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. Because yeah, 100%. That, that could be $50,000 yeah. that you know you can't have that $50,000, but you're saying, nope, I'm scrapping it to make a point with my guys and to keep with our- Raise the level. You know, our level so we can actually just deliver perfect parts and stuff. And I think there's a lot of people that struggle with that but I think if they have a strong, strong leadership and good vision and, and good communication, they can, everyone can, everyone can change their shop around. Yeah. hundred percent. It it's not, an ex, too, it's yeah. not expensive to change your shop around. A lot of it is just creativity, vision, Processes. communication. Yeah. Process mindset. Know. Oh, mindset. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mindset. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. it is. Yeah. I always say, come to work ready to go. Mach- yeah. Machining is a mindset for sure. It is a hundred percent mindset. What any any uh, any other advice or anything? So you 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 actually study a lot about you know where we're going. Like we're 4.0. We we're talking about we five, yeah. industry 5.0. Mm-hmm. You know where it's like it's funny. Like because you're like oh we're we're automating and then all of a sudden we're bringing the human element back in. You know like uh, what's the future hold? Well, no, it's, hold on. Be careful. We're, oh. we're asking a f- guy who has a degree in philosophy. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a true story. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, I mean, it depends on who you who you ask. You know, where you stand depends on where you sit, I think, a lot of times. But you had mentioned that industry 5.0, right? And so, and you'd put it away that, to be honest with you, I hadn't quite heard a little bit about bringing the people back. But what I had heard is, look, industry 4.0 is all about connectivity, right? Digitalization, yep. machines talking to machines, uh, AI helping to take all this big data and make decisions on predictive maintenance and, you know, make unassisted changes and everything's integrated, right? That's that integration, you know, but they talked about really industry 5.0, what I had, what I have read at least seen is that there, it's almost like it's going to be value driven a little bit. Values are going to come back into Mm. it. And I wonder if that's why, that's why you heard is bringing people back because you can't really associate values really in my mind outside of people. And so, I don't know, I think the future is going to be not necessarily what you do as a company, but who you are as a company and what you're about. Yeah. Right. You know, and so I mean, I think people will be more conscious about where they purchase products from. I think you're already seeing that a lot, and so there's there's vision statements that go along with accurate product. I think, and I think that's probably what the future is going to come. And in some sense, maybe that makes us well positioned because so much of what we do is what we're about. Right. We 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 seek precision in our product. We want to put out great videos, great education, great content. But what we're about is lifting up this trade yep. and lifting up this industry. So, yep. Yep. you know, maybe we're uh, well Love poised it. for, for oh, the future. Man. Love so, it. I always Love say it. it. You, you can have millions of dollars worth of machines, but if you can't make good parts, you ain't got, mm. gar- you ain't got mm. anything. Forget, Forget about it. You know what I mean? Story. It's all matters. garbage yep. and stuff. Right. So, 100%. yeah, super good. Boom. Super Inspection. good. All right. Quality. Quality, Quality baby. Happen. Quality. Quality matters. Gotta have it. Quality matters. Yeah. Gotta These have podcasts it. are weird because, you know, I said good things about Trevor. I said good things about inspection. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's happening. So good. Love it. Bringing out your soft side, baby. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Looking at industry 4.0 and a lot of it has to do with automation. Right? It does. Yep. A lot of it has to do with robotics and stuff. Yep. And and look at what's right behind us right now. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. So you got a linear pallet system got the nhp hooked up to it you got 12 pallets and basically it just hit the floor yeah super good just and then got we just finished started just yeah. got finished last week yeah yeah we just Done. got some of our ready to roll tombstones yep, for tombstone. our first jobs and we're going to be yeah. teaching on it like there's a lot of companies that they they want to bring their work back their supply chain is damaged because they can't get parts you know and it's like well we need to make our own parts but how would we even do it 
And I'm excited that not only on the, the high level, the Heller system, but we're actually teaching on this system. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be bringing in some more Ooh, robotic automation systems nice, and yeah, stuff. Absolutely. But just really focusing on like, Look, got some cool things coming mm -hmm, absolutely great yeah. great things and and machinists don't need to be scared of it no you, you you can set up a system literally in your garage and have a part that just runs 24 7 and you can just take care of your family yep like a yep. couple little parts when you're when we were up in northern california and you're up in like the grass valley area i don't think people really understood that there are a million houses mm. out on the outskirts up on a hill that they just made a little building yep and these guys just made, they just make some little couple harley parts that they specialize S in sold those guys plenty of machines there's so many oh, yeah. machines i put on the property hill, the hills have eyes the hills have <laughs> eyes <laughs> and machinists in them too but but i think that you start looking at it and it's like automation is a beautiful thing because it allows us to bring work back to our country because now we're working smart. Smarter. Exactly. You know, I always say like, keep you the know, spindle turning. Yep. If you had a hundred people per a hundred machines in the future, because of automation, now you have 20 to 30 people per the, the building, but you have 10,000. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I said like companies. So like 100 people for 100 companies, and then it'll be like 30 people for 10,000 companies because now now you can have the companies here. You can make the parts here. 100%. You don't have to outsource. If, if you're in Brazil to Australia to the UK, no matter where you are, you can make your own parts. You don't have to have them done in other countries. And therefore, a huge part of, a part of your population can actually go to work and make great money because you're keeping trades in your country. So now... That's a big push of Titans of CNC is to show people how to actually do that. It is. And Absolutely. Give yeah. them that education for That's free. That's the next academy. And it's a mindset. So when machinists say, oh, you're teaching people how to like take our jobs. And it's like, no. Nope. Like if you program robots and you program automation and you solve problems and, and you program the machines and you do all the different things and you design the fixed string, like you can make so much money in this trade because you're solving crazy problems and the company's now making a lot of money because it's automated its system. Yep, 100%. You know? Five star chefs don't churn their own butter. You know? Yeah, there so, you go. You know. Exactly. Yeah, super, super, super good. Super so, good. I, uh, going, going to emo and stuff you saw a lot of a lot to do with automation a lot of automation you know? man more than i've ever seen well yeah. that's how you compete with the low labor costs of, of course other absolutely I mean, exactly. the only yeah. way to do it if yeah. you've got material left on your floor when you shut those lights off at night why wouldn't you you know yeah. people get afraid of automation and how is it going to implement be implemented in the shop and like you said is it going to take jobs away no it's going to enhance that shop it's going to keep those spindles mm -hmm. turning when you are you know at home or on the pillow and and sleep at night and most people if it literally just look on your floor when you leave if there's material mm -hmm. if there's parts still sitting there those could be run while you're while you're gone and that's when you should implement automation yeah. and, and you know what know what the the scariest part about automation is that people don't talk about quality quality right yeah, yeah so it's not just so it's not just like a robot taking raw material and then just bringing out good parts you broken know? tools it's, it's a tools. matter of like yeah. yeah programming so your tools like break chips into small pieces you have chip evacuation you have the right tool pass you have the right things and then um utilizing probes and different things to go in and inspect tight features you know when the robot comes out you know take 20 parts and put it over here every 21st part put it over here in a box that later on they come in and check check good call. check just yeah. make sure that everything is always flawless because you can you can automate you can do all of it but if you don't have on quality and inspection tools and different things but i think uh as we evolve same thing we need to do videos on when you're automating, how do you perfect the quality process? Absolutely. And that's so that's so important. It really is, you know, because you're right. You might have to change the way you machine the part to make sure that the parts are going to last all night long. Unattended no machining doubt. is different than attended machining. There's nobody there to to hear how things are running. Yeah, so you're call. definitely going to have to consider. There's that. a lot of little things too to go so with many it, little like things. Uh, 
you know, I used to run a few different uh, linear pallet systems. And one of the things that I didn't think about was like a chip fan, like Kenna Metal's chip fan. So I set it up to run over a weekend, but we didn't have a chip fan. And when I came in on Monday, the whole pallet area was, was just loaded. cool and it spilled off all the pallets and off the parts. So there's so many little things that you have to think about, you know, yeah. but it make it takes all the heavy lifting away from yeah. the machine. Those, so. those chip fans, I love those chip fans. Remember like, 10 years ago we yeah. were using those and I had small ones and I had big ones and we'd do these big cavities and then I would just go change tools. I would like just <laughs> with the chip fan, get all the chips out and then the tool would come back, just finish it, you know? It's like, so great. Yeah, it's so good. And, I mean, that's that's our industry. That's Processes, machining yeah. is like figuring out just how you can just go down this rabbit hole and make a perfect part mm -hmm. and and yeah, program it for success. That's well, exactly. and you're right. Based on quality. Yeah, and so much of that is quality. Sometimes, you know, if, if you don't know quality or don't know the industry, you can get wrapped up and think the only thing you do is check parts. But quality is more than saying no, it's about ensuring yes, right? Yeah, and So, so good much call. of quality is about helping to design that process. And that's why I say quality should come out from those doors. Don't get siloed in that department. Yeah. Come out on the floor, help be part of the process. That's what true quality is, Boom, right? Yeah. Ensuring good parts come Love out first it. time. Yeah, and you know, you know what I love, Travis, is that you and I, we we have consistently had a great relationship, but we've been, we've had our bumps along the road, because you say it like it is, yep. you know what I mean, and I say it like it is and stuff, but we talk it out always, and hundred percent, and we keep moving forward, and uh, I love that, I love that you just have the vision and that you've, I just love who you become in this company, you know what I mean, like like I walk, I watch you walk down. I'm just like, man, I got such great men. Look at you guys, man. I got such great men that work for me. You know what I mean? Work for this company, part of this Heck team. Yeah. And that's a that's an honor thing. Good peeps. Uh, a plus team. Quick, a -plus. quick, no quick shout out is also, you know, you have an unbelievably beautiful family. And um, when I was talking about my 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 whole struggle with my wife on the podcast, like look at look for the one that has Gina in it. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about the story with David and Abigail, Abigail. and uh, I talked about your daughter being mm -hmm. yeah, I heard named I it. Abigail. Did you watch that? Yeah, hundred, yeah, absolutely. We got like biblical in mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> exactly. Abigail setting people right. That's it. It's crazy, <laughs> yeah, right? I love it. You know, nothing better to humble a man and bring him like, you know, into humility than a good woman. Oh, you don't you have to tell me that. <laughs> Super good. Yeah. Bingo. But I also wanted to say, I love that I see these little messages where, you know, every, was that every third Tuesday or Monday, the Bible breakfast? Yeah, and Marty B's. Yep, it's the last Tuesday of every month. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love how you're just so solid on that. Like never putting pressure on any of the guys. Not everybody believes, and no, we're, we're fine sure. with that, yeah. of course. But you're always consistent just saying, hey, if you want to go have breakfast, man, and hear a good word. It's good word, and it's free brisket tacos. I mean, nice. what, what more could you ask for? <laughs> and, and, better than, and better than that, it's like good leadership. Oh, yeah, yeah good on you, you, buddy. Boom, and sure. with that, 100%. I think we can mm. end. I love, I love, I love it. it. Boom, love, love you guys, man. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, absolute. Texas, football. baby. Texas, man. <laughs> hey, Travis, yeah. what about Texas, man? Oh, I love Texas. About, I love Texas. What about Texas, I do. Man. I love Texas. We're, you know, I, it's funny. I'm not going to lie. There was a there was some hesitation in the beginning, you know, but, you know, it's funny. You talk about that good, good word. We had talked about, you know, leaving California, and then I ruled Texas off the map. I was like, I'm not moving to Texas. Everybody's that. moving to Texas. And it was like a week later, you called me in the office and said, I'm moving the company to Texas. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, so, so it's good. funny, man. And it's here funny. we are. Yeah. And then you're, looking for, you're looking for a house and every day after work, you were like, oh, I'm going to meet uh, Jack and Jack. go look at houses. And you're like, this is my life because you couldn't find a house. And I was like, dude, you're going to find the perfect house. It's going to be a blessing. And then you did. And totally blessed. Now everything's. And then, yeah. You guys are, uh, I might screw this up, but okay. it was, you're playing softball, right? I am playing softball. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. with Trevor. With, yeah, with Trevor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Knocked the church. The, knocked it out of the yeah. park a couple yeah, times. Our church has a men's softball league that we started up. And so, so yeah. Yeah. You mm -hmm. picked Trevor's a victim good. and not an opponent, I see. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, love you guys. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. We're out. Peace. Thanks.